Richard. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Quinta. It is fantastic uh, to have you here this evening. So well done for making it. Well done for finding your way through all the, the many doors. I don't think I've ever walked through as many doors or, or held as many doors open. Uh, well done for making it here. Um, we've still got one or two people who are going to be joining us um, either late tonight or, or tomorrow morning. Um, so not everybody's quite here, uh, but we're almost um, all here. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more in a minute just about um, the weekend, and we're going to get to know um, Frank in a little bit, and we're going to spend some time worshipping and praising God together. Before that, though, I'm going to hand over to um, Alistair, who's just going to do us our health and safety. Um, Alistair, thank you so much. Yep, give him a round of applause. You're all going to switch off now, aren't you, if you think I'm going to do the health and safety talk, which I'm not really going to do. Um, it is really, really good to see you. Um, Quinter's had a really, really busy summer. Uh, it's been really exciting. We've had just over 4,000 people come up the drive in the last two months. Um, so uh, that's been fantastic. But it's really, really good that you're here. We had a really big conference the week before last. Um, so if you look at the field just down below here, Quinter Hall, you'll see some of the grass is a very different color to the rest of it. That's because there were two huge big tents. We haven't had aliens come and land here. We're, you, you should be okay. Um, but it's really exciting. We feel now we're into the autumn season, uh, and it's great that you're here to kick that off. And we hope that you have a really, really enjoyable weekend. And there are a couple of other groups um, here on site as well, so you may see them around the place. The important health and safety bit, I guess, just to say, is if a fire alarm goes off, uh, please make your way out of the building, whether that's during the day or in the middle of the night. It does just randomly, very occasionally go off in the middle of the night for no good reason. And it hasn't done that for months and maybe even a year by now. <laughs> so that day is getting ever closer. Well, let's hope and pray. You want it to go off in the middle of the night? Yeah, you'd love it. <laughs> um, let's hope it doesn't happen. Uh, it can happen in the next couple of weeks because I'm away and then someone else can deal with it. Um, but I hope it won't spoil your weekend. Um, if it goes off, the fire alarm goes off at about half past eight, we'll know someone's burnt the toast because that's normally what happens. Um, if there's anything not quite right, even if it's as simple as the light in your bedroom no longer works, do let me know. The office is just by the front door. Uh, and if I can put it right, I will. If I can't, I'll probably tell you. Um, if the dishwasher breaks, I can find you a tea towel. That's about the limit of my dishwasher mending abilities. Um, but I hope you have a really, really good weekend. I'm going to pray for you, if that's okay. Um, and we can uh, commit the weekend to God. I love you, Father. We thank you uh, for a safe journey. Pray for those who are still en route, that they would get here quickly and safely. And Father, we thank you for all the hard work that's gone into planning this weekend. Father, we know that you've got great things in store as your word is opened uh, and as these folks sit under it and uh, want to find out more about the plans that you have for them. And as time is spent over the meal table, uh, in the lounge, outside, just times to get to know each other better. Father, we pray that you would deepen uh, relationships, not only one with another, but deepen folks' relationship with you. Father, we commit the whole of the weekend to you. Uh, we thank you for the Lord Jesus, and we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you. Very yes, madam. No, no, no. If the alarm goes off at 8.30 and you can see the toast on fire in there, you can ignore it. If it goes off in the middle of the night or at any other time, assume that it's for real. I'll tell you whether it is or not. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Um, uh, as I said a moment ago, um, welcome. Welcome particularly if um, it is your first time on the weekend away. Um, or you like, all right. <laughs> I know it's Friday night. Um, one of the reasons actually we've kind of moved to the Quinta and we're not at the Basin Fair, one of the reasons we're sort of all like, oh, where, where do we go? Where is this? Um, is so that we can get more people here. Um, so if you're here and you're thinking, wow, this is the first time I'm here, it's a long time since I've been on a church weekend away, um, fantastic, um, because that's why we're here. Um, so uh, really good to see you all. Um, let me just begin uh, with sharing a verse that kind of really encouraged me this week. If you've got a Bible on you, um, do you just want to turn up um, Ephesians? Um, just Ephesians chapter 1, um, and then we're going to praise God together. Thank you. 
Uh, So Ephesians chapter 1, just one verse, one sentence, um, verse 22. Um, So Paul's praying for the Ephesian church. He's praying that they might know the hope um, and the power um, of God. And he says this, um, talking about Jesus, verse 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything uh, for the church. Um, I read that this week and um, I was really encouraged by it. Um, Paul is laying out that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Um, Everything is under his control. All authority now um, and in the future. Um, All things are under his feet. He's head over everything. Why is he head over everything? Why is he head over everything? Um, How does he end the sentence? He's head over everything for the church. Um, Jesus is ruling now um, on the throne of heaven with all power and authority, and he's doing it for for you and me, um, for the church. Um, That's why Jesus reigns, and that's why he's exercising his great power and authority. I was feeling quite anxious this week about a whole range of things, Um, you know, just kind of watching the news or kind of other things. I was feeling quite anxious. Read that verse. Jesus is on the throne, and he's exercising all power for the sake of his people. That's kind of like a warm bath, isn't it? You can just kind of slink into that and go, oh, fantastic. Praise God. Uh, Jesus is on the throne. He's, he's working for his people. And that's the reason we're here today. Because Jesus has worked it so that we would be here. Um, as his people, hearing his word and praising him. We're going to do that now. Uh, we're going to stand and we're going to sing two songs. Um, crowning with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. He's on the throne and he's working for his people. And then, oh, praise the name. Um, So let's stand and praise God together.
Praise His name forever. 
Lord Jesus, we praise you. We thank you that you reign. We thank you that you reign now at the Father's right hand. And we thank you that you are exercising your great power and authority for our sake here this evening and for your church worldwide. Thank you that you're doing that so that one day we will praise your name forevermore in eternity, gazing transfixed at your face. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, please grab a seat. Um, I'm going to invite Frank up, actually. Um, so uh, it is absolutely wonderful to, uh, to welcome Frank Price with us. Um, Frank, do you want to grab this microphone? There you go. Um, so uh, Frank has wonderfully agreed uh, to travel all the way from Cambridge to come and speak for us um, at our weekend away um, this weekend. And I was, I was trying to figure it out earlier. I think I've known you now for about 18 years. That is quite a long time. It is a long time. You don't look old enough for that, really. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's why I've got a beard. Um, uh, Frank... Do uh, they still ask you for ID at, uh, when you go to buy they don't, they don't need to know about that. <laughs> um, uh, no, not since I got the beard. Um, right. uh, Frank... Um, oh, Frank's probably the reason, actually, that I'm, uh, I'm a vicar. That I'm in ministry. He's one of the reasons under God. So it's all Frank's fault. I that can I'm only apologise. <laughs> um, uh, Frank married Annie and I. Um, a number of years ago now. So it's great to kind of um, have you here. Um, thank you so much for coming. I'm, it, I'm delighted. Thank you very much for having me. I love church weekends. We have one, and I always really enjoy it, and so I'm looking forward to this one. Great, fantastic. Well, it'd be good to get to know you a little bit, so I'll ask you a couple of questions. Um, so first of all, do you just want to tell folk, kind of, I've said you're from Cambridge, um, family that you've left behind in, in Cambridge, kind of what's Cambridge like church-wise? Um, yeah, I mean, Cambridge, we are blessed to have quite a lot of churches in Cambridge, which is really encouraging. But then lots of, lots of people come from all over the world, so it's great to be able to introduce them to Jesus. We often have people look out of the church family and people from lots of different countries and uh, cultures. Um, Catherine, I'm married to Catherine. Um, she still put, puts up with me somehow. And we have three girls, so I'm pretty much outnumbered in our house. Even the dog is a girl. Um, but I do, they do look after me very well. Uh, they are, they're just sort of at the leaving home stage, which I'm not happy about. Um, so the youngest is just doing A-levels. Uh, the middle one is at university. The oldest one is, has just started work in a different city. But she still comes on holiday with us, so that's okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, and uh, a bit further back, actually, how did you, um, how did you become a Christian? Um, yeah, well, I, I became a Christian in my late teens. I was, um, I was an obnoxious um, person back then. I haven't changed that much, Andy's thinking. Um, but I was pretty difficult. I didn't have a lot of friends as a result of that. Um, but this guy at, uh, that I'd been at school with uh, invited me to go away, and I thought, well, that never happens, you know, because I didn't have many friends. Um, so I better go. Uh, and he said, but there is a catch. He said, my parents are Christians, and it's a kind of Christian summer event. Um, and it turns out the reason he asked me is because I was, I was so outspoken being anti-Christian that he thought he could take me to this event and we could just go to the pub and get drunk and uh, there wasn't any danger that I would be interested in the Christian side of it because I, I used to sort of mock, well, the two of us, we used to mock the Christians at school and, and, and tease them and embarrass them. One of them contacted me recently uh, on Facebook and found me as, uh, on Facebook and said, are you the same Frank Price that used to bully me for being a Christian at school. <laughs> and I said, I'm really sorry, I'm afraid it was me. Uh, and she said, oh, now you're a vicar, there is a God. So, yeah. <laughs> so, he took, so I went on this Christian event, and the thing that surprised me was his parents, who were Christian, just so patient with me. People were not usually patient with me because I was quite difficult. Uh, so gentle, I would try and get them into arguments about why Christianity was a bit silly, uh, and they never seemed to get upset by that, and they were just very, very gentle. And that made me think, well, these people are different. I'm going to actually listen to what they're saying, which otherwise I wouldn't have done. And it turns out Christianity wasn't what I thought. It wasn't about trying hard to be a good person because I, I didn't really want to be a good person. And I, I didn't think I'd be able to be a good person. But instead of that, it was about being forgiven. And it was about God's love for me despite having messed up in lots of ways. And that really kind of hit home and, and got through to me. Um, and I tried to remember why did I think Christianity was silly. I, I really couldn't remember it just all suddenly started to add up and make sense. Great, fantastic. And so how old were you at that point? Uh, I was about 17. Okay. Um, so then kind of join the dots between becoming a Christian as a 17-year-old 
Um, and then you w you were worked in law for a little bit, is that right? I did, yeah. I was a lawyer briefly. Why give all that up and become a vicar? Uh, well, I did enjoy being a lawyer. I mean, I still like a good argument. You know, you don't, you shouldn't really, you, that's not a good thing when you're trying to be a church minister to like arguing. So you can do more of that when you're a lawyer than you can when you're a minister. Um, but I... I think the thing that I was most excited about was what I was doing in my spare time. We had, I was in the east end of London. We had uh, quite a sort of scary youth group, lots of, um, you know, knives and drugs and stuff. But they, some of them were really interested in Jesus. And you could see that that was giving them hope and it was changing people's lives. And I thought, oh, just wouldn't it be amazing to do this all the time instead of just in my free time? Um, yeah, so I think that was what started that that journey. Great, fantastic. Um, okay, so a couple of quick fire questions now. Um, uh, w if you had one meal for the rest of your life, you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, um, what would it be? A cheese board. I'd probably die though, wouldn't I? Maybe that's not a sensible choice. Yeah. I'd die happy. Okay, okay, great. Cheese board, <laughs> fine. Um, Favourite all-time film? Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last streaming series you watched? The last one I watched. Yeah, the last streaming what, series like that you whole, watched and enjoyed. Uh, so, uh, Race Across the World, we're kind of nearly at the end of that. Does that count? Okay. Mm, yeah, all right. I'll let you off. Um, uh, if you could only have one book of the Bible, what would it be? Oh, my goodness. That's a weird question. It is a little bit, isn't it? Uh, it's a bit left Just a long one, just I a think. Long one. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Isaiah. Good. Isaiah. We're doing Isaiah later in the term. Well done. There we go. Thank you. Um, and biggest encouragement of seeing God at work in the last year? Oh. Well, I'm going to tell you about some of them in the talks. Um, well, I, I'm really encouraged. I mean, it's always exciting when people become Christians. Uh, I think I was particularly excited. I don't know if this is helpful to say, uh, that my daughter's boyfriend became a Christian. I wasn't, it wasn't great that she decided to go out with him before he was a Christian, I would have rather she picked a Christian in the first place. Um, but, you know, we prayed for him and he became part of the family and became a Christian. So he's going to be uh, confirmed, uh, baptized, confirmed in a few weeks' time. So that's exciting. Fantastic. Right, well, in a minute, you're going to give us um, a bit of a preview about what we're going to be um, hearing from God um, over the weekend about a series you can change. Um, just before you do that, though, um, I mentioned there's actually quite a few people who are on a weekend away for the first time, um, even actually if we've been on loads of church weekend aways. Um, how can we make the most of this weekend? What, what are some of the things that we can do, uh, some of the helpful things we can do to make the most of the weekend um, from a man that's been on many church weekend aways? Yeah, you said you were going to ask me this, and I thought, oh, I wonder what Andy wants me to say. Just if I don't say the right thing, just yeah, you, yeah, you say it afterwards. Um, I mean, I think it, when, we, when we have one, we say it's about getting to know God better and getting to know each other better. Sometimes getting to know God better, going away from normal life and really sort of focusing on what God is saying in his word um, and just thinking, what a difference does this make to my life back home? And you can talk to each other about it. I mean, it's great to be here with a bunch of people who are hearing about the same stuff and coffee breaks and lunch breaks. Um, it, you could talk to people who know you. You might also sometimes want to talk, to, sometimes there are some things it's easier to say, ask or say than someone who doesn't know you. So that's partly what I'm here for. Mm. Um, if you see me, you know, in a, in a coffee break or a lunch break, um, you know, don't think I'm trying to have a break. I mean, I really want you to come and ask me uh, questions or just ask me to pray, pray with you about something. I'd, I'd love that. Um, yeah, so I think uh, but the other thing is getting to know each other better. I mean, if you look around the room and you think, well, there's people here I don't really know, it's a great opportunity to get to know them. And then when you get back to your church family, you've got sort of a stronger bond with each other. And then maybe, I guess there may be some people here who are here for the first time who, I mean, I would find it quite, quite scary, you know, not knowing anyone. Um, and so it's really nice when people who are at home and who know each other kind of look out for those people and get to know those people as well. What would you have said? Exactly that. Um, great. Would you give us uh, give us five minutes on um, on you can change, and then I'll come and pray. Okay, great. So the theme that we're looking at is called is called you can change, and I've called it that um, because it often we don't think we can change. And I'm just going to tell you about four people briefly, and then I'm going to read one Bible verse. Um, and they are real people, but I have changed their names just in case you ever uh, come to Cambridge and meet any of them. 
Um, first one, Ash, a control freak, very difficult person to work with, always picking faults in every little detail, fussy about the little things, wakes up in the middle of the night, can't get to sleep again, busy kind of planning uh, how to fix problems, how to sort problems, how to, how to put everything right. Um, overworks, far too long hours. People leave his organization because they just, in the end, find him too difficult. Doesn't really listen to other people's ideas because there's this kind of nervous anxiety. If, if, I, if we don't do things the way that I planned, it might fall apart, it might not, might not work. Even time with family for Ash is stressful for the family because Ash has got to be on top of it. Um, on, on one occasion, the kids couldn't agree what they wanted to do for a fun day out, and they were still arguing it, arguing about it, and the car on the way, uh, and Ash just decided, uh, that's it, we're not going to go anywhere, and just turned the car around, and went back home again, and everyone was miserable. That's Ash. Bella um, worries what other people are thinking about her. In fact, she's kind of crippled by it. And after she's had a conversation with someone, she's, she's replaying the conversation in her mind, thinking, well, what did I say? What did I, what did I, is that embarrassing? Um, and, uh, and, and she decided to train to be a teacher, but had no idea how stressful it was going to be. Always having to do assessments and get graded on things and get told what was good and what was bad. Um, doing a practice lesson and having an experienced teacher sat in the back of the room and then dreading having to get feedback afterwards. She got to the point where she thought, I just don't think I can go back there. I'm too terrified by the whole experience. There was a boy that she liked, um, but she would never dare um, let, let the boy know that because what, what if he didn't re reciprocate? What if he didn't feel the same way? That would be just too much to cope with. So she just never told him. That's Bella. Um, Carter, now I'm going to do a PG version of this because we've got an all, age, all ages represented in the room. But Carter had a problem looking at stuff he shouldn't really be looking at on the internet. So much so that it became a bit of a bit of an addiction. Uh, he was ashamed. He was embarrassed every time he said, I'll never do this again. But then he always did go back to it and do it again. Just got into worse and worse things, just hoping that his partner would never find out about it. But of course, in the end, they always do, and she did. That's Carter. Daisy, um, last one, Daisy, she is just way too busy and just constantly exhausted and never has a moment to stop and think. That's because when she's at work, she wants to do really well and impress everyone and work really hard and just to prove that she can do it and kind of justify herself by showing that she's great at this job. And she's exactly the same with everything else in life. There's, there's four children in the family. All of them have to do like music clubs and dancing clubs and sport clubs. A hobby is not just a hobby for her. So she does running and she has to like, run marathons and longer and longer marathons and get better and better times. Um, even when she does craft, she's kind of posting it on social media and YouTube and making money out of it. And she's become a Christian. She really wants to read the Bible day by day. And she, she gets the, got a Bible app on her phone and she looks at the Bible each morning, um, but she just can't resist having a check of all the, uh, how is her YouTube channel doing? How many likes has she got on social media? She's constantly distracted by that. All of those are real people, and all of those are people who reached a point where they thought, I really want to change this. This is really messing up my life. I don't want to be like this. But they all felt they couldn't change, and that nothing could be done about it. And I, I'm here to encourage you this weekend and say you can change. And they are all people that have changed. I've had the privilege as a pastor of being alongside them and just seeing God change them and transform their lives and help them to get past those issues that each of them were, were dealing with at the time. Um, and so I'm encouraged. I can tell you that they changed because I know them. And I can tell you that they changed because I am one of those people is me. Um, and, I, and I can tell you that God has changed me. I'm not the f finished article. Uh, I still have some of my old flaws, but God has really changed me and helped me to make progress. And we're going to look at each of those, those four people. We're going to look at the sort of four things in the Christian faith, four truths in the Christian faith that have helped those four people. Now, you will have different issues in your life that, that I haven't mentioned but I'm hoping it will help all of us to see how does God change us. And probably a key Bible verse for the, 
for the weekend would be when Jesus says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And for those four people, it was truth about God that the Holy Spirit really put into their, into their hearts that then changed them to make them more like Jesus. And that's what I'm praying will, will be happening for me uh, and, and for all of us as we think about that over the weekend. Fantastic, Frank. Um, let me pray, um, and then we'll sing. Okay, let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for that wonderful truth, um, that the truth does indeed um, set us free. And, um, and we give this weekend to you now. Uh, we do pray that, um, that through your word and by your spirit, um, you will be working in each and every one of us. Um, help us to see uh, more of Jesus, more of um, the wonderful gospel. Um, and would we connect that with all the, the things that are going on in our, in our lives and our hearts? Uh, Father, please work this weekend by your spirit uh, to change us and to change us to be more like Jesus. Um, so we pray for Frank as he speaks. Uh, pray for um, that you'd empower him and cause him to rely upon your spirit uh, to be at work through your word. Uh, Father, we pray um, for our time together over, over coffee. And um, Father, be at work in those times too. Uh, Father, work this weekend, we pray, uh, to set us free and make us more like Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to um, uh, sing one more song uh, this evening. Um, Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Because that's what we want, isn't it? We want Christ to be working um, in each one of us uh, this weekend. Um, so let's, um, let's stand um, and sing this together. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark. Side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hope my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley. Suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hope my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free. Every breath. 
finish, Ooh, thank you very much, uh, just with a couple of uh, notices, uh, so we know what's going to be happening um, over the next uh, 12 hours or so. Um, some of you are looking forward to bed, um, you can go to bed whenever you want, um, uh, so feel free. Um, if you don't want to go to bed yet, um, there is going to be uh, tea, and there's going to be coffee, and there's going to be cake, um, and Josh and Erin, I think, are sorting that out. Um, so that's through in the dining room through there, um, so feel free to go grab um, tea, coffee, uh, cake, hot chocolate, whatever's there. Um, tomorrow morning, um, breakfast is then going to be served um, in there at 7.30 till 9. Uh, we've got a wonderful catering company um, coming in to, to cater for us um, over the weekend. Um, breakfast is um, sort of serve yourself, so they'll have everything out there for you. Um, so just go down there whatever time you want, 7.30 till 9. Um, and then for anybody who'd like to, we're going to pray um, just for anything that's on our hearts and for, for the day ahead. And we're going to do that in the library. Um, so the little room um, just on the way in. Um, on your left. Um, so the library, um, 8.45 till 9.15 tomorrow morning. And then we're in here, again, for the first session at 9.15. And if you've got children, um, can you drop them off in their groups first? Um, so settle them in their groups. Why don't you go to the, try and settle them at about kind of 10 past nine. Um, so they're all nice and settled. Um, and then you can come in here um, ready for, for us to start. Um, is that all okay? Has anybody got any questions? Anybody not know where they are? You're at the Quinter. Okay? Fantastic. Um, uh, let me pray one final prayer for us, and then we can uh, head off. Um, let me pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that we're here this evening, um, and we commit our time to you. Uh, please bless it, and please change us. In Jesus' name, amen.